that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice. Let us rejoice today and be glad in it. Come on, clap your hands. Psalms 100 says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God, and it is he that has made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and bless his name, for the Lord is good. The Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. His truth endureth to all generations.
his name? Jesus. What's his name? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. David said, I will bless the Lord at all times. So magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together.
him at all times. You got to command your soul to do that. When you feel like it, when you don't feel like it. Because we were created to praise him. And while you praising him, he's working on your behalf. All you got to do is praise him in advance. He's working. While we're praising, he's working. He's working for you. He's working for me. He's a faithful God. And he's seeking worshipers. Those that worship him in spirit and in truth. Fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. Come on, sing it with me. Come and quench this thirsting of my soul. Are you thirsty? Bread of heaven. Feed me. Feed me till I want no more.
brand new mercy. Yeah. So you're wonderful. Yes, 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 you're wonderful. To me. To me. Yes, you're wonderful. 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 To me. To me. Yes, you're marvelous. Yes, you're marvelous. Oh, so marvelous. Yes, you're marvelous. You're so marvelous. Yes, you're marvelous. To me. Yes, you're glorious. You're so glorious. Yes, you're glorious. You're glorious. Yes, you're glorious. To me. To me. To me. To me. Come on, Jay. Let's bless him to me.
as we worship in this place. I'm so glad you're here today. May God's blessings come your way. May you feel his warm embrace as we worship in this place. No matter what you're going through, want to let you know God made so let us continue to rejoice and be glad in it we're so thankful to the Lord that he's blessed us with the gift of today 
Amen. It's because of the Lord's mercies that we're not consumed. His faithfulness fails not. So we're thankful to the Lord. We're thankful to the Lord for everyone that's here on today. We praise God for you. Amen. If you're visiting and worshiping with us for the first time and you did not receive a visitor's packet, if you raise your hands, our sanctuary support team will ensure that you receive a visitor's packet. If you're here in the sanctuary and you didn't receive a bulletin, whoever you are, you raise your hands, we will ensure that you receive a bulletin. Just want to pass on a point of information to some who may not know, but early Saturday morning, our dear sister, Sister Wienheisen, transitioned. She left this side of eternity and went into the presence of the Lord. So the service for her, homegoing service, will be Thursday, this Thursday at 1 p.m. This Thursday at 1 p.m. A viewing will be this Wednesday, September the 16th, from 2 p.m. to 8 p.m. at the Simpsons Family Mortuary. Now the location is 51st and Broadway. 51st and Broadway. All right, condolences may be sent to the home of Sister Veen Heisen. This information regarding her address is in your church directory. If you don't have a church directory, you can call the church office and get the address as to where to send the condolences. So pray, we solicit your prayers for the family. Amen? Amen. All right. Uh, for this service on Thursday afternoon, we solicit and we need the help of all of our ministries. Amen? We need you to be here and be in position that we might serve this family for their home going, for the home going of our dear sister. All right? All right. Uh, we, we have a, a program, but before we get to a program uh, today, I just want to let you know now that after dismissal, there, there are sweets and eats. I figured that would get a response. <laughs> Amen. And also the men's ministry uh, at 1230, we have our men, men's cave meeting at 1230 p.m. Also, we want to bring to your attention now that hopefully we still have it, your attention, that next Saturday is the food giveaway. Next Saturday is the food giveaway, and we need extra help because as we do annually when we do our Community Unity Day in the park, we give out an additional 50 uh, certificates for food. So that means we will have double what our normal food output is. So we need double the manpower. I'm using the term generically, but we need d double help. So we need, we need you to come and help us pack uh, uh, the boxes and just be of service to the community as we bless them with some food. Amen? Amen. All right, next Sunday is Back to Church Sunday. Amen. Amen. Next Sunday is Back to Church Sunday. So hopefully we'll see all of you back to church on next Sunday. <laughs> Glory. <laughs> Hallelujah. And uh, invite somebody to come back to church. Amen. Amen. Somebody that you may have not seen, invite them to come. Mm. Don't incite them. Just invite them. Amen. 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 Um, also, in recognition of our Men's Wellness Month, next Sunday we're asking our brothers to wear blue attire. All right? And we have a special lapel pin that will be given out on next Sunday for men's health. All right? Okay. We want to honor and recognize today those who have a birthday in the month of, uh, is it August or September? September. September. All right. There's some September people in here. So if your birthday happens to be... In the month of September, stand up. All right, now before we sing, we want the September birthdays to know that after dismissal, you can get your cupcakes. 
for the September people. All right. All right, let's say, oh, happy birthday to you. Oh, happy birthday to you. May you feel Jesus here every day of the year. Oh, happy birthday to you. Oh, happy birthday to you. And the best year you've ever had. One more time. Oh, happy birthday to you. Oh, happy birthday to you. May you feel Jesus near every day of the year. Oh, happy birthday to you. Oh, happy birthday to you. And the best year you've ever had. Amen. Birthdays are to be celebrated. Amen. Celebrate life. Amen. Borrow that from our, our bishop. Amen. Celebrate life. Amen. Celebrate life. All right. We seem like we're enthused and excited and happy. That's good. That's good. So now at this time, we're going to bring to you our Grandparents Day program. All right. Let's receive Sister Irene. I think she needs... You want to do it from there? All right. You need a microphone? All right. Let's get her a microphone. Number two. Now, keeping with the spirit, praise the Lord and welcome. <laughs> Today is National Grandparents Day, and I want to welcome all our grandparents. I want you to know that grandparents are special. Grandparents are wonderful to our grandchildren. They have so much to share with them. We want you to know that you are loved and appreciated, you're valued, and all our young people look to you to be an example to them so that when they grow up to be grandparents, that they'll have that solid foundation because we shared with them the love of God, we shared with them our love, our time, whatever it is we can do to help our grandchildren because they're special to us and we need them and they're our future. There are grandchildren out there who are in the world who may not have a relationship with their grandparents or even with their parents. and so. As godly Christian grandparents, we need to put those values into our kids. We need to show them that they can do all things. We need to encourage them. Let them know that they're loved. Let them spend time with you. Share your life experiences with them. And whatever you can do to help our grandchildren to be better young people so that they can grow up to be good, long-standing adults. And we want, to know, we want them to know that we love them. And our grandchildren, we want you to respect your grandparents, love your grandparents, spend time with your grandparents. Just show them that, you know what, whatever they ask you to do, be obedient to what they say because they know, they know more than you do. <laughs> and so we want you to know that, you know what, they can help you. They can do, they're there to be your support. No matter whatever it is you need from your grandparents, they're there to be there for you and you should be there for them and love them so that when you, you can say all the great things that your grandparents meant to you or you have a legacy of what they what they showed you what they shared with you and you have long-lasting memories of how much you loved your grandparents and what they did for you and you can tell other people about what kind of loving grandparents you have and so you can draw your friends to want to know to get Christ, to know Christ, because your grandparents shared those values with you. And so today I want to welcome all you grandparents. You're lovely. I want you to know you're loved and valued, and I'm so glad that you're here. And so now we're going to start our program. <laughs> Um, Mark Hale Sawyer was supposed to be our first speaker, but he's not feeling well today, so he wasn't able to make it. So please pray for him and let him, you know, we, we, want, we thank him for even trying to volunteer. But our next uh, speaker will be Karen Beverly. Kareem Beverly. And he has something to say about his grandma. <laughs> Hi, my name is Kareem, and my grandma is Sister Bessie. I love my grandma because she is awesome for playing games with me. My grandma also puts me in place when I'm wrong. My grandma takes care of me when I'm sick. I love my grandma because she reminds me to pray every day. Thank you. 
Now, wasn't that awesome? Those are the kinds of things that we instill into our grandparents, and so that was just really awesome. You know, that, and he learned that because he's with his grandma, <laughs> and we appreciate him. Uh, our next presentation will be from Evan Martin and Danielle Merriweather to their grandmother, Mother Martin. <laughs> Good morning and happy Grandparents Day to all the wonderful grandparents. Today, my cousin Evan and I would like to honor our grandmother, Ernestine Martin, who wasn't able to make it today, but is viewing us by way of live stream. Hi, Grandma. <laughs> our grandma, she is so very near and dear to us. Ever since I can remember, she has always been there. From the times when we were in elementary school, when our parents weren't able to pick us up from school, she would have us come over to her house and she would welcome us with loving and open arms. She would spend nearly all day preparing dinner for us when she did not even have to. She would even provide an environment for us to study because she knew just how valuable education was. Our grandma, she is so very generous and she is always willing to give. Whether it's monetary or just as advice, she has always been there. Our grandma, she always inst tries to install, install God in us, making sure that he's, he's at the front, forefront of our life. Um, I remember um, when, when we would go to our grandmother's house, she would always um, have us come into the living room and she would read us Bible stories and then she would have us pray. It's just those type of things that, you know, and memories that I really do cherish about my grandmother. And I just am thankful for allowing God to have a, to allowing God for us to have a praying grandmother because a praying grandmother is everything. So thank you, Grandma, and we love you. In honor of our grandmother, I, I drew this picture of her. what we can do for our grandchildren because they have a praying grandmother and a loving grandmother. They instill those into these young people and look at the fine young people they have turned out to be and they have honor for their grandmother and we just appreciate that. Uh, next we have Gabby, Gabrielle Thomas who's going to do a poem to her grandma. <laughs> Hey y'all, good to see ya. I wrote a poem dedicated to my grandmother. She said, lovely lady sitting in the back, right there. Hi grandma. <laughs> and I wrote a poem dedicated to her called My Grandma. Wasn't very creative with the title. Okay. My grandma is a remarkable woman. She's a wonderful combination of warmth and kindness, laughter and God's love. She looks past my many faults, encourages my dreams, and prays that I succeed. She has the wisdom of a teacher, the sincerity of a best friend, and the tenderness of a mother. She's someone I admire, respect, and love very much. My grandmother has a beautiful soul. She's in fact the woman I aspire to be. She is someone for whom I want to have two times the happiness in return for all the joy she brings to me. My grandma never has an ill word towards anyone. My grandma is a giver and expects little in return. She feeds my body and nourishes my mind. My grandma is a gift from God. Love you. We love Sister Gabby. Next on our presentation is Jason Strickland, and he's going to give a presentation for his, on his grandma. Grandparents are truly a blessing, aren't they? I was so blessed to have grandparents who I, who I love so much and as they do to me. My grandmother, Bertha Wheeler Snyder, has certainly had a significant impact on my life. She has taken care of me, she's always been there when I needed her, and she tries her best to help me whenever I need it. And I'm so appreciative for that because she doesn't have to do that, but since she's such a loving person, and that she loves me so much, she does it anyway. And I couldn't ask for anything more. And for my grandfather, Thomas Simmons, fortunately he can't be with us today, but I'll always cherish the memories that we had.
thank you. And you know what? I was just sitting there thinking we have, don't have a lot to say about our grandfathers, but we want you to know that grandfathers are just as important as grandmothers. And grandfathers can import, impart into our children the things that they need to know about how to be wonderful, grown young men and women, women in, this, in our society. So we want to salute our grandfathers, and we don't want to forget about them, and we don't want to overlook them, but we appreciate our grandfathers. So thank you. Next is a uh, presentation by Timothy and Daniel. <laughs> All right. My grandmother, Sylvia Wainwright, we're the grandchildren, but we also have great-grandchildren that we're dedicating this to. So this is a little something I've been working on. <laughs> it's new. It's new. It's called A Few Lessons from Nana. Say, Nana, what a blessed road that you have paved. All of your children got to admit and believe that you are heaven sent because of the lessons to each of us that you gave. You taught patience, kindness, to tithe and to pray, to love God, to listen and to give thanks every day. So continue to talk that talk, Nana. Walk that walk, Grammy. And we will try to follow you each and every day. Nevertheless, right now, we are your lineage, your tribes of Jacob that seek to ascend and achieve great things from your lead. From Abram to Abraham, Jacob to Israel, Paul to Saul, you are the matriarch of this family. And we just want to part our thank yous, our how are yous, what can we do's, and let me get that for you. Not because we owe you, but that because we love you. For every birthday, holiday, getaway, when you made a way to get on your knees and pray for our follies, you have found time to tarry and to help bury our sins and repent. And like Mackenzie said, you made it look easy peasy. <laughs> We've never seen you drink smoke or curse and the closest thing of that was a story about your patient as a nurse but timothy gregory david daniel nicola gregory three aj aiden mckenzie and lauren all want to say that we thank god for allowing us this moment to say happy grandmother's day Thank you, O oh Lord Jesus, that you were able to partake and enjoy all the presentations. And we just want you to know we do love you. And right now, if all the grandparents would, like, raise your hand, we have a little something we want to give to you. And in... Oh, oh, I'm sorry. We want to bring up the little children first. I'm sorry, before you do it. We want to bring up the little children and with your little pictures. All of you, come on. Get your pictures. Come on, let's go. We don't have a lot of time. Come on. <laughs> all of our little grand, all of our little children here have done pictures for their grandparents, and we want you to know that they worked hard to do this, and they want you to know that they love you very much. So turn your pictures around. Come over here. Sister Tracy's gonna take a picture. Come over here. Come on. Go over here this way, so we can all be to stand right here. Can you get everybody, Tracy? Donald, Donald, look, Donald. <laughs> okay. Thank you. 
Okay. Hi, sweetheart. Hi, you want, sweetheart. You want to say something? Yes, yeah, sweetie. You say you, okay. Say love you. Love you. Happy Grandmother Day. Happy Grandparents Day. Hey, hey, day. Okay, thank you. <laughs> yeah, little children are precious in our sight, aren't they? <laughs> they are so cute. <laughs> okay, I want now all your grandparents to raise your hand because I have a little something for you. But inside of the little gift that I'm passing out are keychains and they have a cross on them and what I've done was I put all the names of all the young people so I would like for all of you to like pray for whosever name you get on your keychain and the colors on the keychain it represent a certain thing so I just want to just read it to you black represents sin red represents the blood green represents new life blue represents baptism white represents purity Purple is the crown of life, and yellow is perfect light. And so, happy Grandparents Day. We love you. Enjoy. Have a great day. And we just want you to know that you keep doing what you do to help our grandchildren. Thank you. And, Pastor, thank you for allowing us to have this program. <laughs> Let's give, let's give God praise for the wonderful Grandparents Day program and our grandparents. Amen. Thank you so much, Sister Irene, and those who helped you get this together. That was beautiful. Amen. Amen. And let me extend my wishes to all the grandparents and great-grandparents. Happy Grandparents Day. I'm, you know, I was thinking about my nana and I, my sister here can bear witness to the fact that in my nana's house I was king I could not my mother couldn't whoop me in nana's house so I'd, I'd have to say I think that I was the favorite I just think that because I, would, I, would, I remember fondly I used to, when I was a little boy and I would eat loaves of bread remember the 27 cent short loaves of bread and I would walk around the house eating a loaf of bread in my Nana's house and they would get after me and Nana although she was bedridden she ruled that house she said leave that boy alone and that's what they did <laughs> they left me alone <laughs> amen so cherish your grandparents Cherish your grandparents. Amen? Amen. All right, we're going to continue our worship this morning, and we're going to worship the Lord in our giving. Amen. We're so grateful to the Lord for his goodness and his kindness, and we're grateful to the Lord for we, his people. And we have, for the week of September 6th, we have achieved 100% of our weekly goal. So we praise God for that. So we want to keep that streak going. Amen? Amen. So we ask uh, that we would give. What have you purposed in your heart to give to the Lord on today? We cannot truly repay God for all of his blessings, uh, all of his benefits, uh, but we can give God out of our substance. Amen? To show him how much he is worth to us. We know if you're a member of this assembly, we know what you know what we asked you to do. We ask that you would govern yourselves accordingly. And you see the things that we're doing here in our uh, service and the things that we do for the community. We need your funds to assist us to continue to do what we believe is the work of the Lord in this community. Amen? Amen. So if you're going to give your gifts, if you're going to give your tithing today, give your offering today by way of check, please make the check payable to Home Assembly Church. Home Assembly Church. If you want to give your gifts, your tithing, and your offering by way of credit card, if you exit those double doors and turn to your left, someone will be there to receive your uh, gift to the Lord. Amen? We ask, as is our custom, if you are willing and able, if you wouldn't mind standing with us, standing with us and hold your gifts that you're going to give to the Lord uh, in one hand 
And on the back of our church bulletin, we have our church unity prayer. And in reading this prayer, we're actually praying and asking God's blessings upon what we're giving back to him. All right? So let's begin. For this cause, we bow our knees unto you, our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that you would grant us according to the riches of your glory, that our church be strengthened with might by your spirit in our inner man, that you, Christ, would dwell in our hearts by faith, that we, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height, and that we would know the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge, that we might be filled with all the goodness of God. Now unto you who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us, Unto you be glory in this church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. For this cause also we do not cease to pray for our church and desire that we might be filled with the knowledge of your will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that we might walk worthy of you, Lord, unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of you, strengthened with all might according to your glorious power, unto all patience and longsuffering with joyfulness, giving thanks unto you, Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who have delivered us from the power of darkness and have translated us into your kingdom, Jesus. For it is in you we have redemption through your blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Furthermore, because the promises of God are true and our latter will be greater than our past in unity, we declare that our church property will be 100% completed in God's perfect time and will be within budget according to his perfect will. In unity, we declare that our church will be a beacon in the community to draw souls to Christ and that our hearts will be ready and open to welcome all, allowing God to get all glory, for it is he that have made it so. Lord, we thank you for everything that you have done for us. We thank you, Lord, that how you blessed us with our finances. And we pray, Lord God, that this morning that you would receive our gifts unto you. Let them come up before you as a sweet-smelling savor, Lord God. We pray that you bless every individual that gives because we love you. We pray that you let your blessings overtake and surround them, Lord God, that they might have everything that they need. We pray that even you would bless them with an abundance so that they might have to minister to those that come in contact that are in need. And we pray that you bless the tithing and the offering at the hands of our assembly, that we might meet all of our obligations, and all of our responsibilities, and all of our concerns as it relates to finances. And we pray, Lord God, that you would meet the need, Lord God. And just in case there's someone that has a desire this morning to give, but through no fault of their own, they don't have it this time. Look into their heart and credit it to their account in heaven, Lord God, as done. And bless them that they might have have it on the next time. Receive our gifts, Lord God, from our heart. And we say thank you for receiving them and thank you for blessing us. In Jesus' name, amen. If you'd be so kind as to follow the directions of the sanctuary support workers from the rear. Thank you.
The choir's last selection is Bow Down. Bow down and worship him.
and in our our attitudes. Hallelujah. Bow down. It is an act of surrender, an yeah. act of submission. We bow. Bow down. Before a holy God, we submit to you. Bow down. Yes, to your will, to your way, to your word, Lord. Bow down. We say yes, Lord. Let's receive our pastor. Hallelujah. Bow down. to your will, Lord. Bow down. We say yes to your way, God. Bow down. We're nothing without you. Bow down. We need you, Lord. We need you. Consuming fire, sweet perfume. His awesome presence. His awesome presence fills this room. Consuming fire. Consuming fire, sweet holy ground. This is holy ground. This is holy ground. This is holy ground. This is holy ground. So we come. So You formed me out of clay. Hallelujah. And for your glory I was made. Use this vessel, Lord, as you choose. And let my life, let it praise you. Speak to our hearts today. Give us ears to hear what your spirit has to say to the church. And hearts to obey. We need you, and we are so keenly aware that we need you. We've always needed you, and we will always need you. So bless us now, and feed us. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to talk today. I was thinking in this Grandparents' Day, and I want to talk about generational faith. Generational faith. That's what I believe the Lord put on my mind to talk about. And I'd like for us to begin in the New Testament in 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter number 1. 
2 Timothy chapter number 1. I want to talk about generational faith. We've heard some excellent honor and reverence given to the grandparents here in our congregation, and we praise God again for them. And uh, we just want to add our voice and give us all something to think about as it relates to generational faith. Now, Paul, the Apostle Paul, is writing this second epistle as well as the first epistle, First Timothy, to an individual he calls his son in the gospel. And uh, we, we will begin at the first chapter, first verse, but I want to give you a little background on just who Timothy is. According to the 16th chapter of the book of Acts, <coughs> excuse me, Timothy, T Timothy's mother was a Jewish woman, a Jewish believer. She was a, a Jewish believer, and his father, Timothy's father, was Greek. Timothy's father was a Gentile. But Timothy, through the teaching of his mother, and also, as we will find out, and his grandmother, Timothy became a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. Timothy had a good represent, he had a good a good reputation among the brethren in the area where he lived. And so when Paul came, I believe it was Lystra, he had a good rep rep reputation in Lystra and Iconium. So when Paul came on this journey and he, he desired, because he heard the good representation, the good reputation, I have to leave that alone since I can't pronounce it. He had a good rep. All right, okay. And uh, Paul said, all right, I want to take him with me on a missionary journey. Now, you have to understand that Paul was going to take him to some other Jewish brethren. And some writers say because Timothy was, had a Greek father, his father didn't allow, while he was living, him to be circumcised. And then some writers say that at that time when Paul came, Timothy's father had passed. And he was living, Timothy, his mother, and his grandmother were living in the same place. So Paul, being wise, and Paul being uh, aware of the custom that not only wouldn't the Jewish brethren hear Timothy unless he was circumcised, they wouldn't hear Paul because he was associating with someone who wasn't circumcised. So scripture lets us know that Paul took Timothy and circumcised him. Not that circumcision means anything, right? But Paul was aware of the culture and he was wise enough to understand that this man is going to have to come with me and he's going to have to preach and teach the gospel and we don't want nothing like a quote unquote outside appearance to be a hindrance from the gospel message being received. That speaks to us even in our day. We need to be aware of the cultures that we try to uh, declare God's word to. Not that we change our message, but we need to be aware of the cultures that we go into. Amen? Because I am, I'm a firm believer that cross-cultural evangelism has to be intentional. It has to be intentional. So Paul used wisdom. He used wisdom and circumcised them. So we're going to take that off the list so now they can hear you. All right? So you can't go to everybody with a suit and tie. Uh, you might have to wear some shorts, some sandals, and turn your cap around backwards, but you're still you. Hmm? You're still you. 
Amen. And God is still in you. All right, so that's just a little background on who this Timothy is. So in the second chap in the first chapter of Second Timothy, he begins Paul writing he says Paul an apostle special messenger of Christ Jesus by the will of God according to the promise of life that is in Christ Jesus to Timothy my beloved child grace favor and spiritual blessing mercy and heart peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord so he gives him this this wonderful greeting then verse 3 gets a little interesting to my mind. He says something here. I thank God whom I worship with a pure conscience in the spirit of my fathers. When without ceasing I remember you night and day in my prayers. What caught me in this verse, Paul is saying, I worship God in the spirit of my fathers. Now we have to know a little something about Paul's heritage, all right? Paul was a Jew, right? He was a Roman Jew, right? And he was a Pharisee. He was a Pharisee of the Pharisees. He was carefully, meticulously educated in the Jewish religion. And when Paul was in the Jewish religion, he persecuted everyone that believed in the name of Jesus until he had a Damascus Road experience and he met the Lord on the way to put people like us who believe and teach and preach in the name of Jesus, he was going to put them away in jail and have them killed. But the Lord met him on the road. So now when Paul is saying, I thank God whom I worship with the pure conscience and the spirit of my fathers, basically I believe what Paul is saying is that when I got the revelation of who God really is, because remember he said, who art thou, Lord? When I got the revelation of who God really is, then my eyes was open and I understand that I was fighting against God, but that did not negate the teaching that I received from my fathers. All that did was open up the teaching because my fathers, uh, uh, those who uh, came before me, those who poured into me the knowledge of God that they had, they poured in what they had. But when I met the Lord for myself and he enlightened me, he said, I am Jesus whom you're persecuting. Then my, rev my understanding and my enlightenment was higher because God took me where my fathers couldn't take me. My fathers could only take me so far, but I'm not going to discard the teaching of my fathers, but I'm thankful to the Lord that he revealed himself to me. So what am I saying? I'm saying that thank God for the teaching of your grandparents. Thank God for the teaching. Thank God for, for the Christian teaching, for the good moral upbringing that your grandparents and your parents and your great-grandparents taught you. But you're going to have to come to a place in your life. You're going to have to have your own Damascus Road experience. You're going to have to come to a place in your life where you meet God one-on-one. -on -one. You're going to have to meet God one-on-one. -on -one. But Paul was saying, I worship God in the spirit of my fathers. And he said, I'm praying uh, for you uh, day and night in my prayers. Now, again, we uh, have to understand that Paul, he was educated in that Jewish religion. And he did it, the things that he did against the church of God, he did it ignorantly. He didn't know. He did the best that he could. And uh, I have to say this now because uh, if you have, if you, if you witnessed uh, the program that we had this morning, and I would tell people even when I used to teach Sunday school, uh, you don't know how blessed you are to have saved parents. You don't know how blessed 
you are, and maybe you take it for granted, but just let me tell you from an individual who didn't have saved parents, you don't know how blessed you are to have saved parents, and then you're doubly blessed if you got saved grandparents. You just, you ought to praise God right now. You ought to be shouting in here right now. I'm, trust me when I tell you, you ought to, you ought to be shouting and thanking God every day of your existence for your saved parents and for your saved grand grandparents. But just in case you're in a similar category as me and you didn't have a, a saved parent or you didn't have a, a saved grandparent, but thank God the things that they taught you, they did the best that they could with what they had. And you ought to pray. If you got any good teaching, if you got any good moral teaching, if you got any good respectful teaching, you ought to praise God for that right now. Whether they were saved or not saved. And don't hold them or don't charge them guilty because you are here now. <laughs> Glory. Hallelujah. I told my mama before she passed when some of us was giving her a hard time, I said, Mom, you did the best that you could. I said, don't let nobody put you on a guilt trip because you did the best that you could. Now, if they didn't listen, that's on them. Amen. Amen. But I want you to understand how blessed you are to have saved grandparents and saved uh, uh, parents because what they have done, they have brought to you the faith of Jesus Christ in his purest sense, the unadulterated word of God. I know sometimes we didn't want to hear it, and I know sometimes we probably said in our minds, oh, Nana, whatever you call your grandparents, Paul, Paul, oh, that was back in your day, and you don't know what's going on this to this day, it is different. Now. Ain't nothing. It's nothing new uh, under the sun. Uh, listen, uh, your grandparents and your parents uh, didn't get the wisdom just like that. Uh, they done been through something. You hear what I said? Uh, they done spent time in the presence of God. Uh, they done spent time on their knees. Uh, you had them up at night uh, worrying about some of us. Uh, Okay, some of y'all, some of us uh, had them up for sleepless nights uh, worrying uh, and praying. Uh, they was bombarded, and they still are. If the truth be told, they're still uh, calling out your name uh, before God, saying, God, uh, bless uh, my seed. God, uh, bless uh, my heritage. God, uh, let your word uh, come to pass. Thank God uh, for the consistency uh, of your grandparents uh, because you know what they're doing even now, uh, even in their older age. They're still holding on to the promise of God. They are still holding on to the word of God. And the reason that some of you ain't went off on the deep end, you might have got closer to the edge, and you might have looked in the vicinity of the deep end. But God, I believe, is honoring the prayers of your grandparents. God is honoring the prayers of your parents. And, and they're saying, bless them, Lord. They don't even know what they're doing that but they're holding on uh, to a promise uh, what promise is your grandparents uh, holding on to uh, the promise uh, that when God uh, poured out the gift uh, of the Holy Ghost uh, he said this promise uh, is unto you uh, and it's to your children uh, and to them uh, that are uh, far off uh, I'm talking about generational faith uh, so the same faith uh, of your grandparents uh, is the same faith uh, that your parents have uh, and it's the same faith uh, that they're trying to pour into you uh, with everything uh, uh, that they got. Uh, and this uh, was the same faith uh, that Timothy had. Uh, it was in Timothy, uh, and it was in his mother, and it was in uh, his grandmother. So Paul now, he continues, uh, and he says in verse number four, when I recall, uh, when as I recall your tears, uh, I yearn to see you uh, that I may be filled with joy. See, Paul, uh, he saw something uh, in Timothy, and uh, I don't care uh, how you try to cover it up, uh, young people, but we see something uh, in you, uh, and what we see in you uh, is the Spirit uh, of God. Uh, what we see in you uh, is the calling uh, of God. Uh, you can club all you want to. You can get high all you want to. Uh, you can fornicate uh, all you want to, but 
God is still in you, and we ain't giving up on you. So Paul said, I saw something in you, Timothy, and I'm standing and declaring, I see something in you, grandchildren. I see something in you, great-grandchildren, because God has placed his spirit on the inside of you. Buck all you want to, but one day soon, God is going to rise up in you, and you're going to shake up, you're going to shake off all of that junk that the devil is trying to keep you bound in. I hear the Bible said, whom the Son has set free is free indeed. So you're already free, but you got to realize that you got to stir up. That's what he told Timothy. He said, stir up the gift that's in you. That means rekindle. There's a fire in you. I, 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 I was present when some of y'all got filled with the show now, uh, Holy Ghost. Uh, so I can declare that there is uh, the fire of God uh, in you. Uh, and the fire of God uh, is the spirit of God. Uh, it's the power of God. Uh, and it's the presence uh, of God. Uh, so Timothy uh, was being admonished. Uh, he was being encouraged uh, to stir up, uh, reignite, uh, rekindle uh, the gift uh, that's in you. Uh, Paul said, uh, I know it's in you. And I know faith is in you because it was in your grandmama and faith was in your mama and I'm sure uh, that is in you. Uh, I hear Paul said uh, on one occasion, uh, I'm not ashamed uh, of the gospel uh, of Jesus Christ. Uh, grandchildren, uh, great grandchildren, uh, don't you dare uh, be ashamed of the gospel uh, of Jesus Christ uh, because uh, you know that it is the power of God uh, unto salvation. Uh, so all this faith uh, has been passed down uh, from generation uh, to generation. Uh, I hear Jude said uh, at one time uh, to earnestly uh, contend uh, for the faith. You know what that means? Uh, you got to defend uh, this faith. Uh, let me tell you something. Uh, I would be in trouble uh, if I was out on the street uh, and I run up and I ran up on you and start talking about your mama. You probably want to knock me down. Yes, you would. And don't dare say nothing about, about your grandmama and your whole generation. But what am I trying to say? You got to contend for the faith that was once delivered unto the saints. What faith? The faith in Jesus Christ. The faith in the word of God. I believe in these last days of 2015, God is looking for an army. God is looking for an army of young people who will stand up. You hear what I said? Listen, you've already been enlisted. You've already been sworn in. You've already been inducted into God's army. When did I do that? On the day you repent it of your sins. That's when you walked up and said, okay, I've joined this army. And then you went through an induction ceremony. You got baptized in Jesus' name. And God filled you with the Holy Ghost. He equipped you with all the power of God himself. And he set you down God knew what family you would be born in, uh, and your family that you were born in uh, was a godly family. Glory be to God. Uh, so the instruction uh, that you got from your parents, uh, the instruction uh, that you got uh, from your grandparents, it was arming you. Uh, it was equipping you uh, for the day of battle. And now today uh, is the day of battle. They taught us uh, in the army, it's if things happen uh, and we have to go out uh, and engage the enemy, that's why we trained uh, so hard. Uh, because when you train uh, and you train uh, and you train, uh, you don't have to think about uh, what you're going to do uh, when you face the enemy. You just revert uh, back uh, to your training. Uh, what is God trying to say? Uh, listen uh, to the instruction uh, of your grandparents. Uh, they're training you. They're training you for battle. Uh, they're training you so when you you walk out uh, into the world, 
You ain't got to worry about, well, what am I going to say? What am I going to do? Just revert to the training. Glory. Hallelujah. And you've been trained in the word of God. I hear the Bible said, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. So this don't, don't say, I got to go to grandma's and she going to pray. I got to go to Paul's and all he going to do is pray and ask me what God would do. Listen, that's your strength. The word of God is your strength. I hear the Bible said that the word of the name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous run in and they're safe. And in your Bible, God has declared he called the old because they know the way. And all you got to do is sit down uh, with some old folks uh, glory some old folks chronologically in God uh, and they know the way uh, and open up your ears uh, and let them pour into you uh, all the godly wisdom uh, that they can uh, and then uh, that verse said uh, he called the young uh, because they're stronger uh, so you're strong enough uh, to face everything uh, that the devil uh, will put uh, in your path uh, you ain't got to back up uh, glory hallelujah I got to get what the Bible said here because uh, Paul was telling Timothy don't be afraid Listen, when you have the power of God, when you have the word of God, when you have the faith in Jesus Christ, you ain't got to be scared of nobody and nothing at no time. Stand on the word of God. Listen to what I said. You got the power in the Holy Ghost to control, glory, hallelujah, your flesh. Lord, help me here this morning. You got power if you got the show enough. Uh, Holy Ghost, uh, you got power uh, to get up uh, out of that bed uh, of adultery or fornication. You got the power uh, to look that devil uh, right in the eye and say, I ain't taking another drag uh, off of nothing. Uh, glory. Uh, hallelujah. You got the power uh, to put the bottle down, uh, to put the cup down uh, to put the pills down uh, you got that power because that power was in you uh, and it was in your parents uh, it was in your grandparents uh, so stand up uh, everybody ain't doing it uh, that's a lie uh, from the pit of hell uh, God uh, will not uh, leave himself uh, without a witness uh, I believe uh, that there's still some young people that are living uh, for God uh, I'm crazy enough uh, to believe uh, that there's some young contenders. Uh, they're up and coming. Jude said, uh, earnestly contend uh, for the faith uh, that was once delivered uh, to the saints. Uh, I believe uh, there's some young people that's keeping their body uh, under subjection. Uh, they're working out. Uh, ah, yes, they are. What's their workout plan? These 66 books uh, is their workout plan. Uh, they're stretching themselves uh, in their faith. Uh, get into uh, the word of God. Uh, exercise uh, your spiritual muscles. Uh, walk. Uh, if you're going to walk, uh, put your earbuds in uh, and put, it, put, put your smartphone uh, on the word of God. Uh, and as you're walking... Getting your bodily exercise, your mind, and your spirit, and your heart is being strengthened with the word of God. So when that enemy wants to present you with an appetizer, glory, hallelujah, you look at the appetizer. Yeah, it's nice. It's fine. And it's well put together. But I've been listening to the word of God. I've been arming myself and to know and understand understand that the devil ain't going to slip up on me with no stuff or with no junk. And God is looking for somebody to show himself strong on behalf of them that fear his name. What do you mean fear? That reverence his name. How do you think in times of old, young people were kings and ruled over God's people because they had a desire to live for God. And I believe I still believe uh, there's some preachers up in here. 
Glory, hallelujah. I still believe uh, there's some evangelists uh, up in here that ain't said nothing. You've been stirring uh, in your spirit. Uh, I don't know why God taking me this way, but I'm going. Uh, you've been stirring uh, in your spirit. Uh, ain't nothing you tried. Uh, ain't going to work because you know uh, God called you uh, to declare his word. Uh, but what my friends going to say, your friends need to be saved. Uh, glory, hallelujah. Could you ever think uh, that you're the hindrance? Uh, that's why your friends uh, ain't save it because you too busy kicking it with them. You need to kick that junk to the curb. You need to tell the devil and all his treats, all his front his front side payoffs. That's what the devil does. He pay you off in front with a little something because he knows it. He can't pay you in the end. The devil has a reserved seat in hell. That's where he's going, and he wants to drag you. But you got the power over the enemy. You got the power to walk right there in the devil's court and snatch out your friends. Go get your friends. Go get your homies. Go get your ace boom coons and your pride and joy. Go get your boy. Go get your road dog. They need you to, to, to witness to them. But you got to fortify yourself. You got to, you got to understand that this faith, you got to build up your most precious holy faith. Your grandmama was serious. Your granddaddy was serious. And chronologically, they're on the second half of their life and they're looking to you you hear what I said some of y'all have a great godly heritage and that's why the enemy is attacking you so hard listen you uh, I gotta walk just a little bit I'm trying not to walk but I gotta walk just a little bit you got a great heritage in God and, and the devil he wants to shut your mouth he wants to tear up your witness but I declare that the devil is a liar and he is the father of lies and your Bible if you find it, will let you know that he is already defeated. So since he's already defeated, you ain't got to listen to no loser. Glory unto God. The devil already lost. It's in the book already. He already lost. And I hear your Bible said, thanks be unto God who always causes us to triumph. What triumphs? Our faith in Jesus Christ. Our faith in the finished work of Calvary. He has has been and he is and always will be victorious. So who you want to roll with? You want to roll with a loser or would you want to roll with a winner? As for me, listen, I rolled with a loser for a long time. 25 years I was rolling with a loser and thought that I was winning. But I'm so glad when the real winner showed up, his name is Jesus. He found me on my Damascus road. Now, my Damascus road was Skid Row. Glory. Hallelujah. The devil was just dancing around my head and in my mind. Yeah, I got him. He ain't, he ain't worth nothing. But thanks be unto God, here comes Jesus right down there on Skid Row. Jesus, listen, Jesus can go anywhere you are. And Jesus, so, wait a minute, somebody was praying for me. It might not have been my grandmama. It might have been your grandmama. Glory. Glory. Hallelujah. It might not have been my granddaddy, but it was your granddaddy. But whoever it was, God heard the prayer. He heard the prayer of a faithful prayer warrior. And God found me right down there on Skid Row, right down there in the midst of drugs, in the midst of alcohol, in the midst of homelessness. God came and got me up out of that mess and he placed me look at the grace and the mercy and the marvelous fabulousness of God God placed me into a royal family so I got uh, I got parents uh, I got big sisters uh, I got brothers uh, I got uncles uh, glory I feel like shouting glory hallelujah because it's their faith that built me when I came glory hallelujah I came in here oh battered I was beat, beat down. I have to look up to, to see the bottom and God placed me in a royal family and they fed me. Glory, hallelujah. The same thing they fed you in your house. Glory. Thank God for faithful, faithful, faithful people. 
They didn't treat me like I was an outcast. They embraced me. Glory, hallelujah. They embraced me like I was natural born in your family. And here you got the nerve to be blood born by nature into a godly family. And you're going to rebel? Are you out of your mind? You must be crazy. They treated me like they gave birth to me. And they still do. So how, how grandchildren, great-grandchildren, how shall you escape? If you neglect so great a salvation, this is great. How are you going to escape? Every time, every time, every time the devil try to bring in your head some mess about generational curse, you tell him, no, I got generational faith. Uh, I ain't buying that. Oh, it sounds good. It'll draw a crowd. Uh, I ain't worried about that crowd. Uh, 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 ooh, glory. There's a cloud of witnesses in Hebrews. Uh, oh, I feel like running. Uh, there's a cloud of witnesses in Hebrews. Uh, and the, the, there are forefathers. Yes, they are. And they're standing up, I believe, in heaven. Uh, uh, they got bleachers in, in heaven. they standing up grandstands in heaven saying, come on. You can do it. Come on. Oh, uh, give me my banner. Glory, hallelujah. Uh, I believe, uh, I, I, this is just how my mind works. Uh, I believe uh, that our faithful forefathers uh, who God gave uh, this message uh, of faith, that uh, message of the gospel, are standing up. Uh, you know how when you go to a, 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 a ball game, you know, you got banners in there, you know, and, you know, and you pay a lot of money for them banners, don't you? Put them up on your wall. Yes, you do. Won't put a dime in church. Uh-oh, let me leave that right there. Uh, uh, but you'll buy a banner. Put it up on your wall. But I believe, I believe that they're standing in heaven. This is just how my mind works, y'all. I believe that they're standing, the heroes of faith, our forefathers who went through all kind of persecution, all kind of evil for the name of Jesus, for defending the faith. I believe that they're standing up and they say, come on, come on, son. Who me? Yeah, you. Come on, daughter. Yeah, but I can't trace my heritage. Don't worry about it. You ain't got to trace trace uh, your natural heritage because you've been born again. Uh, you've been washed uh, in the blood of the Lamb. So you're a daughter. Glory. I feel like shouting here. You're a daughter. you a son. Uh, they saying, come on. You can make it. Come on. You can make it. Come on. Every time uh, a test uh, presents itself, uh, I believe they start the wave. Uh, glory. In heaven, uh, they start a wave. Uh, this section will stand and say, go ahead. Uh, you can make it. Uh, this section, come on, y'all. Y'all wave. Get up. Help me. Go ahead, you can make it. Come on, get up. You can make it. Come on, get up. You can make it. Get up. Come on, let's keep it going. Get up. You can make it. Get up. You can make it. Get up. You can make it. Get up. Because the devil will try to make us think that we're by ourselves. But I want you to remember this visual that every time you come across a test, you got a wave in heaven saying, go ahead. You can make it, son. You can kick that habit. God has the power. You can make it, daughter. You can keep your legs closed. You can make it, son. You can zip it up. Yes, you can. Go ahead. You can say no and let your no mean sure enough no. We got a cloud of witnesses. The same faith that took them through it. The same faith that allowed them to go into a fiery furnace. The same faith that allowed them to make a lion their pillow. Glory, hallelujah. We got the same kind of faith. We just got to use it. Generational faith. You really want to honor your grandparents? Huh? Or was this just for show? Hmm? You really want to honor your parents? Or was this just for sure? We, hey, we just wait till next year. I ain't, no, no, no. Uh, mm -mm. 
You can miss me with that foolishness. Oh, oh, Y'all know I'm from Brooklyn, so sometimes it flashes in there sometimes. But that's all right. God can use your personality as long as you let him use you. Huh? But all that foolishness, miss me with that. I ain't got time for that. Huh? Either we believe God's word or we don't. And if you don't, then you got to say, help my unbelief. Because God's word is true. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. That's the faith that was handed. That's what y'all told me when I came in here. And I believed it. And I still believe it. Generational faith. I'm going to stop. I think I, think I gave you enough to think about. This faith was passed down from generation to generation, and we got to continue it and contend for it and defend it and walk in it and live it. Because you need to get your friends saved. You need to get your partners, your homies, your road dogs saved. You need to get your girls saved. You, oh, you need to get your baby daddy saved. All right, can I go there? I'm from Brooklyn. I'll go there. You need to get your baby mama saved. Uh, you need to get little man. Uh, yeah, he need to get saved too. Little mama. Yeah, man, man, Pookie, Ray, Ray. All of them need to be saved. Huh? Little bit, two cent. He need to be saved too. You know, two cent live around the corner. He need to be saved. He need to be saved. Mr. Buggy. Out in, out in front of the uh, liquor store, he need to be saved. Buddy need to be saved too. Huh? Don't look at me like that. And such were some of you. Come on. Uh, generational faith. We have something. You, you hear what I said? We have something. Cast not away your, con your confidence, which have great recompense of reward. You have need of patience that after you have done the will of God, what's God's will? That you go from faith to faith. Huh? You may receive the promise. The promise is coming, y'all. Huh? And we might be, just might be the, gener the generation to receive it in its fullness. When the Lord returns, will he find faith on the earth? All right. I'll stop. Don't sell out when the devil try to bring us some weak stuff. Jesus held out. He held out. The devil came to him and said, look, I'll give you all this stuff. I'll give you all the kingdoms of the world. He was offering him more money than Mayweather got. Huh? Yeah, more power. Huh? than some of them celebrities think they have. Huh? He said, I'll give you all the kingdoms of the world if you just bow down and worship me. He didn't sell out. The devil hasn't offered anybody in here that. We're selling out for chump change. Selling out for some sex. Oh, no, no, no. no. I, 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 I don't want to chase that rabbit. A moment of pleasure for an eternity of damnation. How does that, that don't even make sense on the scales. Huh? It, sell out for some money. That's going to burn up. Some money? Come on. Generational faith. We have to protect the faith. We have to obey the faith, and the faith is in Jesus Christ. The faith is in the finished work of Calvary. We have to live like we believe it. Huh? So then when, we, when our friends see us living like we believe it, we'll be able to draw them. Because they see we're not phonies. We're not fakes. We're not hypocrites or frauds. We have to live this thing. And we have received it from faithful men. I'm using the term generically. That means men and women. We have received it. God left it in the hands of faithful men, and they passed it down from generation to generation, and now it's in our hands. 
we cannot let it stop with us. We have to continue to guard and defend this generational faith. Amen? Amen. God bless you. If you're here this morning and you may have a background similar like mine. Dad was an alcoholic. Mom had mental problems. But guess what? I'm in here now. <laughs> Glory. Hallelujah. I'm in here now. You may not have you may not have a godly heritage that you can naturally Thank you. naturally look to. But guess what? Thank you, Jesus. You got one here. You got a family of God that's willing, that's willing once you come in like we came in, you'll be in the family. Thank you, Lord. You'll be in a royal family. You'll be washed Thank in the same Jesus. blood that we were washed in. All you got to do is repent of your sins. What does that mean? Repent. Change your heart. Change your mind. Change the direction of your life. Be sorry unto God Thank you. for your sins and mean that in your heart. Yeah. That's repentance. Yes. And once you do that, we got some water here. We will baptize you in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And God has promised to give you the gift of the Holy Ghost. You'll have that power. You'll have that gift that Paul told Timothy to stir up. You'll have it in you. Thank you, Jesus. And then you can start to grow. Grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So if you're here and you've never been saved and you I want to be saved, come. All. Come. I come. surrender all. Now if you're here, if you're here and you know you've been struggling to maintain your belief, you've been struggling to maintain your faith, you've been struggling to maintain your stand on what you know is right and you need strength come repent and let these ministers touch and agree with you that from this day forward you will walk in the faith that was handed down to you in the word of God so if you're here and you know that's you you need to come don't look around you need to come you need to come grandchildren great-grandchildren children you need to come you need to come Get it right with God. Get it right with God. Will God find you faithful? Will he find you faithful? Will he find you faithful? You need God to help you with some decisions? Come on. Come on. Do you struggle believing God's word? You need to ask God to help your unbelief. You need to ask him to help you. If you need prayer for any reason at all, come now. Any reason. Any reason. Just come in faith. Come without a single ounce of doubt. Come in faith. Come on. Come in faith. Come in faith. Come on. Come on. Come believing. Come believing and you shall receive. Thank you, Lord. Come on. Come on. Come on. I surrender. I surrender Come on. all. Come on. Come on. I surrender all. Come believing. I surrender. Come believing. Come believing. Come believing. Pray, saints, pray. I surrender all. Come believing. I surrender all. Come on. All to you. Come on. I give. Come believing. I surrender Come all. Come believing. I surrender.
delivered to the saints we have to stand on this thank you, live on this thank you Jesus thank you Jesus come in faith let your faith connect with the author and finisher of our faith who is Jesus Christ Come on. Praise God. Praise God. You know, you can be the one that can start faith in your generation. You know that? It has to start with somebody. You, you might be the one that God is calling for to start a generation of faith in your natural generation. It could be you. It could be you. It could be you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Give God praise. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. This is the best thing we can pass to our children. The best thing we can pass to our grandchildren, to our nieces, our nephews, our siblings, is faith in Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. For those hallelujah, of you hallelujah, who are watching live stream, thank you, Jesus. We're so thankful that you tuned in on today. We are the Apostolic Faith Home Assembly Church, located in the beautiful city of Los Angeles, I California. Surrender. There should be a number on your screen. If you have a prayer request, call the number that's on your screen. We'll have prayer counselors standing by to take your prayer requests. We're so thankful that you tuned in today. We hope you were blessed by your time with us via live stream. If we live in the Lord will, we will see you on next Sunday at 10 a.m. Pacific time. God bless you in Jesus' name.